Hi, and thank you for watching this video in which I will have a quick look at the cover of The Economist magazine, owned by the Rothschilds family. They are, of course, part of the Illuminati and do these cryptic covers every year when they publish this magazine. In these covers, they give their prediction for the world in the year to come. When we study the latest one, however, and understand Bible prophecy, we can clearly see that they have put their plan for World War III in motion to obtain its desired outcome in September of 2017. I am just giving you my understanding of what I see them portraying here and it is only my opinion. However, I believe we can see clear connections to what we read in Bible prophecy that confirms that the time before us is indeed what Jesus termed the beginning of sorrows in the Gospel of Matthew. So when we look at the cover of this magazine, it certainly has an ominous feel to it. The fact that we see them using tarot cards, in my opinion, tell us that this is specifically something that they want us to see as a sure prediction for the world in 2017. Before we look at the meaning portrayed in these cards, let us start with a little background information as provided to us by William Guy Carr in his book, Pawns in the Game, that was released in 1956. Carr was a Canadian naval intelligence officer and a Christian. In his travels, Carr came across a letter that Albert Pike wrote to his director, Giuseppe Mazzini of the World Revolutionary Movement, dated August 5, 1871. Albert Pike was a 33rd degree Freemason and part of the Illuminati. This letter was catalogued in the library of the British Museum in London and has been quoted and referred to by dozens of authorities and students of the World Revolutionary Movement. Carr's contact with the letter came about as a result of a book that was written by Cardinal Rodriguez of Santiago, Chile in 1925, who wrote The Mystery of Freemasonry Revealed, in which he referred to the letter between Pike and Mazzini. Carr went to the library of the British Museum in London and copied the letter before publishing it in his book. This letter was subsequently removed from the library in the 1970s and is no longer to be found, for obvious reasons, as it provides the blueprint for three world wars. Two of these wars have already been executed according to the plan and when we look at the cards on The Economist magazine, we see a number of connections between what the cards symbolize and Pike's plan. Now many dismiss this as conspiracy theory, just because the letter from Pike to Mazzini is no longer in the library. There are, however, just too many references by people in positions of authority to this letter to dismiss this as conspiracy theory. Carr explains in his book that Pike told Mazzini that he received information from his spirit guide that provided him with a detailed outline for three world wars that would be necessary to bring about the new world order. When we consider how the first two world wars were conducted, we see that they match the, des the description as copied from Pike's letter. Let us have a look at what it states about World War I. The First World War must be brought about in order to permit the Illuminati to overthrow the power of the Tsars in Russia and of making that country a fortress of atheistic communism. The divergences caused by the agenta or agents of the Illuminati between the British and Germanic empires will be used to foment this war. At the end of the war, communism will be built and used in order to destroy the, the other governments and in order to weaken the religions. When we consider history, it is clear that the political alliances formed having England on the one side and Germany on the other, and forged by Otto von Bismarck, who was one of Pike's co-conspirators, we see that his actions were instrumental in bringing about the First World War. We see then the following written on World War II. The Second World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences between the fascists and the political Zionists. This war must be brought about so that Nazism is destroyed and that the political Zionism be strong enough to institute a sovereign state of Israel in Palestine. During the Second World War, international communism must become strong enough in order to balance Christendom, which would be then restrained and held in check until the time when we would need it for the final social cataclysm. Communism was strengthened after the Second World War and took over some of the weaker governments surrounding it. 
In 1945, there was a conference held between Churchill, Truman and Stalin at Potsdam, in which a large portion of Europe was simply handed over to Stalin, while the end of the war involving Japan assisted in turning the eastern parts of Asia, including China, into a communist state. When we consider Bible prophecy, it is very interesting to see how Satan twists that which is written in the Word of God. We see that Pike writes that the Christendom needs to be restrained until the final social cataclysm is unleashed. We see then in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 that Paul explains how Christendom, or those who are indwelt by the Holy Spirit, is in fact the, res the restraining force that is preventing this plan from reaching its desired outcome. Finally, we see the following written about World War III. The Third World War must be fermented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agenda of the Illuminati between the political Zionists and the leaders of the Islamic world. The war must be conducted in such a way that Islam, or the Muslim Arabic world, and political Zionism, or the State of Israel, mutually destroy each other. Meanwhile, the other nations, once more divided on this issue, will be constrained to fight to the point of complete physical, moral, spiritual and economical exhaustion. We shall unleash the nihilists and the atheists, and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm, which in all its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism, origin of savagery, and of the most bloody turmoil. Then everywhere the citizens, obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries, will exterminate those destroyers of civilization, and the multitude disillusioned with Christianity, whose theistic spirits will from that moment be without compass or direction, anxious for an ideal but without knowing where to render its adoration, will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer, brought finally out in the public view. This manifestation will result from the general reactionary movement which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. The plan for World War III is the most detailed of the three and describes the actions that will take place in the months before us to bring about the New World Order in September of 2017. We have additional information about these events as this time and war is further outlined by several prophecies given in the Word of God. Knowing that these prophecies were written between 2000 and 6000 years ago, we know who is really in control of the situation and who knows the end from the beginning. This is our Heavenly Father who is responsible for putting together His Word letter for letter and preserving it so that we can have a light to shine on the path that lies before us. So let us consider how the cover of The Economist magazine then lines up with the Illuminati's plan for 2017. Based on what we see in Pike's plan, the Tower God represents the destruction of Christendom associated with the crucifix and atheism which is portrayed by the communist flag. The powers that be believe that both of these entities will be exterminated and conquered at the same time and replacing the other religions with the pure Luciferian doctrine as explained in the letter. Comparing this to Bible prophecy, we can understand that the achieved outcome will match what is written in Pike's letter, but the way in which this will be achieved is a lie. We will get to the reason for this as we continue. The world card is the only card that is not exactly clear to me, and if you have an explanation that you think matches the situation, please share it with us in the comments below. From what I see, I believe this depicts the control that the Illuminati exercise over the earth, and that they have control and influence over all aspects of life. They exercise their control through the 32 degrees of Freemasonry that are represented by the rays emanating from the sun in the middle. The sun represents the 33rd degree of Freemasonry, and this degree includes those who consider themselves the illuminated ones, and function behind the scenes to achieve the, uh, the god of this world's desires. The hermit card points to what these people call the true light of Lucifer, that will be presented to the masses, who will be facing the horrors of the worst social cataclysm ever, and will be disillusioned with commercial Christianity, specifically in the Laodicean Church. These people will face absolute disappointment, having placed their trust in people that they thought would provide the change the world is looking for. 
This will result in an uprising against the minority in control because of their destabilizing decisions that will lead to this social cataclysm. We also see a crescent moon on this card that matches the timing of events as presented in Bible prophecy. The rest of the world religions, including atheism, will be presented with undeniable proof through the presentation of supernatural signs and wonders that will establish the Luciferian doctrine, filling the void that will be left in the wake of this calamity. When this time comes, there will be no doubt in the minds of those that remain about the existence of extra-dimensional realms and beings. We see this also predicted in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, where the appearance of what is referred to in the cards as the hermit and the magician is described. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. We also see a globe with a huge crack in it, and this, I believe, refers to the midpoint of the tribulation, where the earth's crust will be split open as prophesied in the Bible. If you would like more information on this, please watch part 4 of this series. The period of time leading up to the crack in the crust of the earth will also be associated with an increase in earthquake activity, having large magnitude earthquakes occurring more frequently. We have already seen an uptake in large earthquakes over the past few months. I believe this will get even worse in the months to come. When we consider the death card, we see it accurately matches the prophecy in Matthew 24 and Luke 21, where Jesus describes the events that will be associated with the beginning of sorrows. The atomic cloud represents the attack that is described by Isaiah 21, Zechariah 5 and Isaiah 17 that will occur within the next 10 months and will probably have as a result the complete annihilation of Damascus. We also see crop failures and droughts which will lead to famine and food shortages. There are what seems to be two mosquitoes in the top left which I believe is a reference to the Zika virus that will spread and affect the entire world and specifically target the unborn. There is also a crack shown in the ground on the left hand side of this card which I believe refers once again to the earthquakes that will be associated with this period. All of these aspects will bring about the social cataclysm that our adversaries desire for bringing in the new world order. Looking at the magician card, I have heard some say that this points to 3D printing technology which will be a focus in the economy of 2017. This may be true, but I think there is a more sinister message behind what this card depicts. There are three items on this card that stand out to me, and these are the houses that are produced, the eternity sign that is above the head of the magician, and the fact that the identity of this person is hidden behind the virtual reality visor. We also see the sun enlarged behind the head of the magician, showing that this is the representative of the sun god worshippers, who will be responsible for the houses that are produced. His identity is not known until he is revealed to the world at a specific point in time, when the restrainer is removed. Looking at this from a biblical perspective, we read the following from Paul written to the Church of Corinth, in which he addresses a similar topic, which we have to apply to what we see. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. We know that Satan mimics everything that God does, and as such he will use his representative on earth in the form of the Antichrist to mimic what we read in this passage from Paul. I believe then that what this card represents is in fact the mark of the beast system that will be enforced and that will require every person on earth to accept the mark which will apply a change to their DNA and remove their humanity so that they are no longer created in the image of God. People who accept this mark will then be changed into the image of the beast which is exactly what happened during the days of Noah when fallen angels were corrupting the image of God by altering human DNA and producing offspring that were known as the Nephilim. 
the other option that will be available to those who refuse to take this mark will be death by beheading, as we read in Revelation 20 verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. One of the attributes of the houses or bodies that are produced, as we can see displayed on this card, is that they will be eternal and no longer be subject to death. And we see this also described in Revelation. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. It is important to remember that living forever in bodies that are not glorified by God will be a curse. I believe this is why the zombie craze is so prevalent in the media and this is what I believe people who would choose this option will have to look forward to. Anybody who accepts the mark will also lose any eligibility for salvation that is provided by our Heavenly Father. So if you are ever faced with this decision, please avoid acceptance of this mark in exchange for receiving eternal life in a glorified body that you will receive within the following 3.5 years. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. I believe the wheel of fortune God represents the revolutionary uprising by the masses against the rulers of this world that were responsible for the social cataclysm. This will most likely res result in the extermination of these rulers by the mobs that will be rising up against these people and their decisions that have led to the consequences experienced during the final months and weeks of this period known as the beginning of sorrows. When we look at the judgment card, we see that it is tilted, and the same is true for the star card. This feature links these two cards in my opinion, and I will show you why I say this. When I consider what these two cards represent, comparing them to Bible prophecy, I believe they represent deception that will be associated with the information that is being conveyed. The masses will be deceived by what is depicted in these two cards. In the star card we see the faces of people in stars and a strange landscape underneath them. I believe this card then represents the disappearance of millions of people from the earth in September of 2017. The explanation that will be provided by the Antichrist will probably have something to do with these people standing in the way of those who want to achieve the next level of evolution. We see these nuances often under the New Age community who are looking forward to the earth and its people ascending to a higher level of existence. We also know that the Bible provides us a clear description of this departure of people from the earth and the reason why this will happen is given in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. These two passages from 2 Thessalonians clearly explain that there will be a departure or a removal that will occur that will remove the restrainer that is currently preventing the Antichrist from stepping forward. This restraining force is the authority of the Holy Spirit that indwells those who are born again of the Spirit and who have become part of the family of our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. The Bible clearly explains that these people are restraining Satan from establishing a kingdom on earth over which he can exercise full control, and this will only be given into his hand once the church has been removed. 
we see this authority being given to the church by Jesus in Matthew 16. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. While the church is on earth having received the authority from Christ over Satan and his kingdoms, there is no way in which Satan can overrule what is said by Jesus in this verse above. We see this echoed in the response of the disciples that were sent out into the world. And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. This authority will be removed from the earth and can only be achieved by removing those who have received this authority over Satan, being joined to the family of our Heavenly Father. The Antichrist will provide some explanation for these people's disappearance, and I believe he will attribute their disappearance to something that he was responsible for. He will also have to do this as soon as this event occurs, in order to claim responsibility for this event. If he waits any amount of time to step forward when this occurs, he will lose his credibility. The explanation that he will present to the world will in fact be a lie, as the opposite will in fact be true. The missing people's removal from earth will not be as a result of an action by the Antichrist, but this is an action by God that was prophesied almost 2,000 years ago that is necessary in order for the Antichrist to step forward. It is then also interesting that the judgment card that we see portraying Trump as exercising dominion over the earth also has deception associated with it. I believe that people who put their trust in Donald Trump to turn the world around from the path of destruction before us will be sorely disappointed in the months to come. I believe this is exactly what the powers that be wants to accomplish and that is for people to put their trust and hope in a man just to be severely disappointed in such a manner that they will even lose their faith in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of our Heavenly Father, is the only way, the only truth, and the only life that lasts forever, and He will never disappoint those who put their trust in Him. Another interesting aspect about this card is that when we look at the original judgment card, it shows the following depiction. The original judgment card is then linked to the star card and both represent the same event as prophesied in the word of God that will be responsible for the disappearance of millions and the introduction of the Antichrist to the world. This is described by Paul in 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. God has marked this feast day for us with the Revelation 12 sign, pointing out to us the day on which this event will occur. The Revelation 12 sign also marks the completion of the Feast of Trumpets, which is the first feast of the Fall Feasts. We see our Heavenly Father using the exact same method in marking the first feast of the Spring Feasts, using a three-hour solar eclipse to mark the completion of Passover. All the glory to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for giving us the blessed hope that we can look forward to. What joy and hope there await those who are watching for this day, having the oil of gladness in expectation of the bridegroom's appearance. If you have not accepted the Lord Jesus as your Savior, there is still time to do so and to become part of the family of our Heavenly Father that loved us so much that He gave us His only begotten Son so that we did not have to go through the judgment that He has reserved for the wicked. Please make a decision today while there is still time remaining and invite Jesus Christ into your life. He is standing at the door of your heart and is knocking, waiting for you to open for Him. 
Won't you make that decision today and look towards the day that is fast approaching when we will be changed into incorruptible children of God, receiving glorified bodies to live and rule with Him forever. As many as I love I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore and repent. Behold I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. I pray that you will make the right decision today and that I will have the privilege of meeting you in the clouds next year when our time here on earth runs out. May our Heavenly Father bless you and keep you and draw you unto Him in the short time that remains. Thank you for watching. If you found this information insightful, please subscribe to this channel and give the video a like. I will provide more information about the events as described in the book of Revelation in upcoming videos and the next one will specifically focus on the rapture that I will cover over a number of installments. On the events that occurred around November 20th, I believe the fires that we saw in Israel may have been the conception event that was expected, since this was indeed a fire offering as we read in Zechariah 5. Given that this was only a conception event, we can expect a much larger event at the time of the birth. And my assumption in part 5 that there could be a nuclear attack as part of the conception was incorrect. I am also watching to see what will happen at the time when the second configuration of the Virgo constellation conceives. This could very well match the prophecy in Genesis 3 verse 15 stating that the conception will be multiplied with the sorrows. The fact that we have two configurations for Virgo could point to the multiplication of conceptions, both of which fall within a normal gestation period. I will provide further updates as we see events unfold. God bless. Until next time.